You're watching Philadelphia NBC 10. Serving Pennsylvania. New Jersey. And Delaware. Now live. This is New STEM Today. No step to strike, at least for now, as both sides get back together this morning for contract talks. New Jersey State Trooper and another driver narrowly escaped serious injury after the trooper's car is hit during a routine traffic stop in Gloucester Township. And a hostage situation unfolds in Winslow Township, and although the bullets are not real, police involved in this training exercise say the adrenaline is. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to News 10 Today Weekend. I'm Yuzi Brown, Washington. And I'm John Blunt. It's 9 o'clock on this Saturday morning, March 21st. Let me tell you, it is raining outside. We thank you for staying in and joining us. Does not feel very much like the second day of spring, does it? No. Uh, Glenn was <laughs> south, and he didn't bring back any of that warm weather. No. He brought us rain. It wasn't warm down there. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't have any either. Yeah, we've had some nasty weather in the east the past uh, week, a week and a half, and that continues this weekend. It is cold. It is cloudy. And it's not as damp as it was a few hours ago, but it's still a little bit damp outside. Temperature, not very warm. 39 degrees, the wind chill 14, just some light rain or sprinkles reported out at the airport now. We have cold air all day with the wind and some showers from time to time, but the real torrential rains that we had overnight and the thunderstorms, that has moved well past the area. Temperature is not moving much today, near 40. Some showers possible again tonight, maybe even some snow flurries, especially north and west. Temperatures down into the mid-30s. We'll be back with the rest of the weekend outlook and the five-day in just a few minutes. John? Thanks, Glenn. Topic our news this Saturday morning. The SEPTA strike watch continues. Mm -hmm. It's been almost a week since the transport workers' contract expired. And they are still talking this weekend. Both sides are still trying to reach a settlement without a strike. It is not just contract talks giving SEPTA headaches. News 10 at the Frankfurt bus depot along Pratt Street last night where workers discovered eight acts of vandalism the night before last week. Vandals broke windows, slashed tires, and damaged air conditioners on several buses at the Frankfurt site. SEPTA says it has counted 75 acts of recent vandalism at various depots and facilities. And SEPTA is offering a $1,000 reward Regarding to fires set at the Olney Transportation Center Wednesday night, both fires were declared arson. They disrupted rail service for about 90 minutes. And this Saturday morning, some hardball tactics related to the SEPTA strike talks. SEPTA attorney David Cohen confirmed that the AFL-CIO has now asked the Democratic National Committee not to hold its convention in Philadelphia in the year 2000. Cohen called the move, quote, desperate and denied that SEPTA would employ non-union labor. Now let's get the very latest on the talks from News 10's Christine Perez, who's live in Center City, with the details. Christine? Well, John, it is fairly quiet here at the hotel. We haven't seen signs of either side, but we do know that SEPTA and union negotiators are supposed to be meeting face-to-face -face sometime today, and that strike captains are gathering this afternoon to map out strategy. Now, union negotiators tell us that if they see no progress by the end of tonight, a strike could be possible come Sunday night but today the L subway and the buses are running and they will probably run tomorrow the only way to reach an agreement and I want to emphasize that again SEPTA management's sole goal is to reach a fair agreement that is a win for the riders um, a win for the employees and a win for the authority is for the parties to talk about it and we have been willing to engage in that process within the parameters of this informal framework the union is going to be spending the rest of the night doing its own analysis of both the company's proposals and the union's proposals with respect to both issues, cost and savings. So we could focus on the dollars and cents of what each proposal represents. That was Friday evening after a meeting between SEPTA and union negotiators. The two sides say they focused on the issues that are tearing them apart. Wages for new hires, benefits and work rules. Meantime, writers are saying they're growing weary. Every day we, you know, watching the news and waiting to see what's going to happen is kind of impatient getting to be, yes, very. If they were going to strike, strike. If they're going to settle, settle. But to keep people for a week wondering how they're going to get to work, if they're going to get to work, and not know 
that long, I don't think is fair from either side. I don't think they're responsible to their riders. SEPTA officials said yesterday that ridership has been down on average about 7% a day and that they're concerned about 75 acts of vandalism. There were an additional eight buses vandalized last night at Frankfurt Depot. Uh, the vandalism ranged from broken windshields to damaged horns, which again, and I need to stress, impacted our ability to get buses out on the street for our customers. Now, union officials say they're particularly angry over statements Mayor Ed Rendell has made to some extent in support of SEPTA's proposed package. In the meantime, as I said earlier, the L subway and buses are running today. today. That's the good news. They'll probably run tomorrow. Now, Monday is a different story. Of course, we will stay here all morning and keep you abreast of all of the developments live at the Franklin Plaza Hotel. Christine Perez, News 10. Thanks, Christine, for that report. There is other news this morning. Close call for a New Jersey state trooper this morning after a car rams into his police cruiser. News 10 was on the scene just after midnight along the southbound lanes of Route 42 in Gloucester Township, New Jersey. Trooper Nick Massa was getting into his car after pulling someone over when, out of the blue, another car rear-ended his. The shaken-up trooper was treated at Cooper Hospital and later released. The driver of the car that hit the police cruiser, 37-year-old Edward Ott of King George, was also slightly injured in the accident. It is still not clear what caused Ott's car to veer into the police cruiser. An emotional vigil last night in remembrance of teenage murder victim Tiara McLean. Well, Tiara, we love you. We love you always, Tierra's mother released a balloon to the heavens in gentle tribute to her murdered daughter. 14-year-old Tierra McLean had been missing since January 30th. Her body was pulled from a canal in Trenton last weekend. Police say she had been strangled and beaten. The search for a suspect continues this morning. Also this morning, a 13-year-old boy is under arrest for the shooting death of a 15-year-old girl in Germantown. News 10 is not identifying the teenager because he's a juvenile. He surrendered at the police administration building with his parents and attorney. The boy is accused of shooting Latoya Brown Thursday. The ninth grader at Martin Luther King High was waiting for her school bus. Police say they don't know what prompted the shooting. This Saturday morning, News 10 has learned that accused killer Tom Capano allegedly tried to hatch a revenge plot against his former mistress from his jail cell. Sources are telling News 10 the government is investigating Capano for supposedly plotting to have Deborah McIntyre's house burglarized and ransacked. Possible motive, retaliation for her cooperation with the government. Tom Capano was charged with murdering another lover, Anne Marie Fahey, back in 1996. McIntyre was notified of the investiga investigation when she met with federal agents last Friday. Sources say the alleged plot was uncovered before it could be carried out. Tom Capano was charged with first-degree murder. He maintains his innocence. He could face an additional charge of intimidating a witness. The Winslow Township Police Department in New Jersey apparently has some work to do. Officers were put through a mock drill of a stakeout last night. The drill simulated a situation involving several hostages, and the officers were put through their paces. We're going to look at how the detectives work together with the tactical team, with the dispatchers, with the duty officers that are on location, the uh, street supervisors. And we're going to start! But apparently the team did not do too well. All the hostages died as a result of too many mistakes. The unit carrying out the situation did not know it was a drill until it was over. That same unit just graduated yesterday morning. If you plan on going to school at Penn State this fall, you better prepare to pay more money. The university's Board of Trustees has voted to raise room and board rates at the nine campuses that have dorms. The increase is 3.9%, and it takes effect this fall. Officials say they have to up prices because of increases in the university's operating costs. Lots more ahead still this Saturday morning at News 10 Today Weekend, the Consumer Report. I'm Herb Denenberg. Is a higher octane gas better for your car? I'll tell you the latest report coming up in my weekend consumer wrap on News 10 Today Weekend. Thank you, Herb. Air traffic at a Philadelphia area military base is running smoothly thanks to a crafty K-9. You may say keep her ducks in a row. I don't believe it. Get ready for bathing suit season. Billy Smith, Sandy Weston shows you the exercises that keep your bods in shape. Plus, March Madness continues. The Elite Eight get ready to rumble. Sports with Vice and Emma coming up.
It's the great Jeep event. And great deals on your favorite Jeep vehicles are showing up. Updating. Nothing changes faster than the weather, but we're running a close second. Stay informed with Weather Center all day today and every day. In the next half hour, Weather Center AM, a comprehensive national forecast. At 40 after, Weather Center AM continues with highway and air travel conditions. Then the weekend outlook. And at 50 after, storm watch. But right now, it's your local forecast on the Weather Channel. scene in Syracuse, New York this morning where you're getting snow from the same storm system that brought deadly thunderstorms to the southeast yesterday. Good morning. I'm Rick Griffin. Welcome to Weather Center, which is sponsored by Pontiac. And I'm Will Anna. And once again, most of the northeast will see snow, freezing rain, or just plain rain from that system today. And we're going to have a live report from Kristen Dodd in Syracuse in just a minute. But first, a few details on the situation. Let's show you that storm system right now via the satellite picture. And we're going to show you what happened earlier this morning as well with these uh, bright white clouds beginning to roll through the Philadelphia area. Heavy rain did move through there. Also around York and Lancaster counties, flooding was going on overnight because of some heavy rainfall. That batch of heavy rainfall now beginning to move on northward. And once it hits central New York State, is turning to a heavy, wet, plastering wet snow. Let's show you the situation right now. This low and this low will combine. We're going to be watching for the western area of low pressure to meander very slowly on eastward during the next 24 hours, which means a lot of wind uh, battering along the coast for sure and some heavier rains and heavier snow. We're shaping up right now all the way from Syracuse back towards Buffalo, New York. Temperature's not bad at all on this first full day of spring. 32 degrees in Boston, 35 degrees in New York, 29 in Rochester. You factor in those strong easterly winds, and the wind chill goes down to sub-zero levels or single numbers in many locations across the Northeast right now. This is a picture of Pennsylvania. This is New York, the New York State Thruway, Buffalo, Rochester, Syracuse, all report heavy snow at the present time. And right in the middle of all the action right now in Syracuse is our own Kristen Dodd. Not building a snowman right now, but it looks like she's enjoying <laughs> the snow. Kristen. Will, you must uh, have ESP because we were just talking about building one during the next half hour. So for folks at home, you're going to have to stay tuned and see how that actually turns out. And it's a good snow for snow building, snowman building. And you can see here, very heavy, very wet snow and so I don't think we're going to have any problem making snowballs or uh, having a good time with this snow. This will actually be a fun live event for us so we're going to get out here and have a good snowball fight. If you're on the roads though it is not a good time. This is Interstate 81 behind me which runs through Syracuse. We have seen numerous accidents along this stretch. The police have been out helping motorists and trying to get people to slow down. We've seen a few plows but really uh, not that many in comparison to some other uh, areas that we we have been during some major winter storms. So we are seeing some 
some slick spots on the roads, especially on the exit ramps. We also have had reports on the throughway west of Albany. Icy conditions, a lot of slush on that roadway. And so if you are going to be traveling today, take it uh, very slowly. You could be running into some problems quickly. We'll continue to bring you live reports and look forward to that snowman in the next half hour. Will? Okay, thanks a lot, Kristen, and enjoy yourself in the snow in Syracuse. We'll take a look at the rest of New York State right now. It's all beginning to move on northward, the moisture and the snow. And once again, it's really coming down from Buffalo to Rochester to Syracuse as of the present time. Farther south, the heavy rain is gone around Philadelphia and much of New Jersey at the present time. And that heavy band of rain for New York City has moved northward. Expect around New York by morning. Maybe a dusting of some light snow as you'll be looking at more of a northwesterly wind as low pressure begins to pull on eastward. This is the state of Ohio, Indiana right here from Cleveland to around Columbus, nearby Reynoldsburg into the west. You're looking at some light snowfall this morning. Some of that snow goes all the way down to northwestern Georgia, believe it or not. A few flakes of snow in northwestern Georgia this morning on the north side of Atlanta. How much snow is going to be falling? In this area in gray, right in through here, you could be looking at upwards to a foot of snowfall before it's all said and done by late tomorrow morning. That is the latest in our northeastern rain and snowstorm. Now for a look at the west, let's go back to Rick Griffin. He's got the latest. Thanks a lot, Will. Well, the dry weather that some of you have enjoying in the west is about to end. You see there's a Pacific front that will bring rain back to northern California and the Pacific Northwest later on today. And a big spring storm is due into the region next week. We'll keep you posted on that. Today, you've got some high and mid-level clouds tracking into northern California. And we think by the end of the day and maybe overnight tonight, some light rain from northern California from the Bay Area north through the Pacific Northwest. Southern California through the Great Basin and the Four Corners. Lots of sunshine for you today because high pressure will hold strong. And with the strong March sun, uh, 60s coming up in Salt Lake, 50s in Boise, and 80s down in parts of the desert southwest. Almost 80 in Vegas, we think. Phoenix will certainly be in the 80s this afternoon, as well as Gila Bend and over at Needles and Barstow in Southern California. Right now, Phoenix is 52, nearby Glendale the same, 57 in San Diego, City by the Bay is 55, on down to 40 in Boise. One of the cold spots, Lander, Wyoming, right now 18. That's 42 for those of you in the Pacific Northwest at Seattle. East of the Rockies, in this case the southern states, a frosty morning in Oklahoma City. It's been down in the low 40s in New Orleans, 48 right now, and 30s. Atlanta, Marietta, Huntsville, Alabama, and Tupelo, Mississippi. That's only half the story because the winds are gusty through this region and it feels like 17. Updating it. Nothing changes faster than the weather, but.